Welcome to hell. I mean, the game dungeon. Today, you can go to hell. This is a casual flash platforming game, but it has some actual gameplay to it. Also, this is the most vertical episode so far. I love wide screens as much as the next person, but I have to work with what the game gives me. And this game is on a diet. So good news if you're watching this on a phone. For the rest of us, maybe you can tilt your screen or something. All right, let's go. Okay, first off, get a good look at the surface here because this is the last you're gonna see of it. We're digging down from now on. No surface breaks to remind ourselves what the sky looks like. We're going to hell. The goal is pretty simple, dig down. You have to dig 666 meters to get to hell. Works for me. Now for each block of dirt you dig, that drains your hunger meter. If that goes empty, it starts draining your health. You can replenish yourself with power-ups and it's about that simple. I like how this game gives you no backstory at all as to why we're going to hell. Just that you have to do a lot of digging if you're gonna get there. The why is irrelevant. How is the only part that matters. So why am I covering a casual game? Because normally I want games with some sort of actual experience to them. Whereas casual games tend to be more, click this button and something will happen. Oh, you clicked it? Haha, -ha, now you're a test subject. Well, first off, this game is called Go to Hell. That got my attention. Normally, I'd expect a free Flash game called Go to Hell to be some sort of vessel to deliver a virus. But no, this is actually a game here, and it's on the better end of the casual pool. So you come in thinking this game is going to try to screw you, but then you realize, oh, they're not being figurative. We're actually going to hell. Sweet. Second, I feel like we got robbed by Construction Bob last episode. I didn't like how we ended that, with just some recycled animation before dumping you back to the menu screen. I mean, it's not like I'm expecting a happy ending from a game about hell, but I want something. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but this game has a worthy ending for a casual game. You do make it to hell. You probably guessed that, but, well, you'll see. Actually, I take that back. This game has two endings. In the instructions, they tell you you need to collect 50 gold coins along the way. You better do that. If you don't, you get the other ending and it sucks. They turn you away at the door. That ending isn't even worth watching. Get the coins. I find this concept fascinating, especially from a theological perspective. That you need a certain amount of money to even get into hell in the first place. I'm surprised hell is so exclusive. I guess it goes back a ways. Karen the ferryman wants two coins for taking people across the river Styx, but that was back in ancient Greek times. Looks like the rates have gone up since then. Still, the game is saying forget all the morality teaching you've learned. How much money do you have? Cough up the coins, then we'll talk about who's good or evil. Some churches take this same approach. The music here has only one track, but it's quite fitting. It has a nice haunting feel to it. There is one more music track at the end, but I'll let you be the judge of that. As for the gameplay, it's simple, but involves a surprising amount of strategy. You want to find the shortest and safest route to your objectives, and it's not always obvious. Your character here is almost like a pet. He's always complaining. I'm hungry. I'm hurt. I need air. It doesn't end. Air especially can be a problem midway through the game. Sometimes I have to swim off the screen to breathe because everything's flooded so much. But one thing I really like is you can take the game at your own pace. So while there are real hazards like drowning and monsters, if you're in a safe spot, you can take as long as you want to figure things out. There's no time pressure at all. And really, that's how it should be. After all, hell will wait on you. Now, it may interest some of you to know that I actually have hell insurance. What do I mean by that? Well, several years back when I was in school, I had a part-time job working at the school print shop. Ironically, this was not one of my hell jobs. Sometimes I worked the counter, sometimes they had me fixing computers around the school. Point is, being an employee there, I had access to free prints. Also with me was another employee called Dave. We had multiple Daves at the print shop, so everyone called him Metal Dave. Because heavy metal was his life. If it was his shift, you can bet that's all anyone was going to listen to. 
He was a big guy. Imagine a younger, badass version of Penn Gillette, except with more muscle on him, no glasses, tattoos all over him. So naturally, we got along just fine, and everyone else in a radius around the print shop who didn't want to hear heavy metal was not so fond of Dave, but they didn't have much say in the matter since he was the biggest bastard around, and anyone who didn't like it just had to deal with it. Now, I prefer heavy metal that has more of a tune to it, whereas Dave liked the stuff that I classify as closer to the noise end of the spectrum, but still, his taste beat the hell out of anything I was likely to hear on the radio. He really liked this album. So anyway, since we had access to free prints, I had the bright idea to try something I had wanted to do for a long time. You know how there are all these stories about selling your soul to the devil? Well, I've always thought, why does the devil have a monopoly on buying souls? Can't other people buy them too? Well, Dave was totally down with this idea, so we decided to put that to the test. We printed up a bunch of blank soul contracts, then set up a card table in the school cafeteria and offered to buy people's souls in exchange for candy. Now, I've always been kind of a cheap ass, but I decided not to cut corners on this. I bought good candy. Peppermint patties, Butterfingers, Snickers, some good stuff for people to choose from. And we printed up all these signs of happy people and smiley faces saying, free candy. Then when people approached us, we told them all they had to do was sign the soul contract and they could get a handful of candy. We probably looked like a human yin-yang. I was there looking kind of like Jesus wearing a white and happy Wallace and Gromit shirt. And Dave was there in his Slayer t-shirt, black hair, covered in tattoos, but we were both being super friendly to people. The idea was one of us would take ownership of the soul and the other person would sign and witness the contract. Then we would switch off. Dave said he used to work for a notary office, so that made these valid. Anyway, we had some takers. One guy didn't hesitate at all, just said, sure, I'm hungry. Signed right away and that was it. There were one or two girls who really freaked out once they read the contract going, oh no, like they had been warned about this sort of thing. My favorite was a guy who hesitated, choked around nervously talking to us for 20 minutes until he finally signed. All in all, we had a good haul. We got about 10 or 11 souls each. So my reasoning is that if my life isn't up to par by the afterlife standards, well then hey, I'm carrying 10 souls around. That's gotta be worth something, right? Now this strikes me as exactly the sort of thing you don't do to go to heaven, but I figure maybe I can trade these in for a nicer spot in hell. So instead of being burned alive for eternity, maybe I can get a place on the outer rim of hell instead and hang out with all the Greek philosophers or something. I guess I'll have to learn Greek. Now I was hoping to show you a picture of one of these soul contracts as proof I'm not making any of this up, but I can't find them and I'm pretty sure I left them at my parents' house. Now this is a problem because I can't just call them up and ask them to take a photo because I know my mother will say something like, Ross, you give those people back their souls right now. So you're just gonna have to take my word on this. Sorry, I always try to back up what I'm saying when I can, but this time it's gotten more complicated. Anyway, back to the game. Once you go deep enough, the groundwater disappears and you start hitting lava. This will kill you pretty fast, but I have to say, for all its faults, Construction Bob had the more accurate portrayal of how humans interact with lava. Oh, and I should mention the levels are procedurally generated, so it's never quite the same. That also means you'll run into situations like this. Look at this. No matter what I do here, I'm in for some pain. Well, no one said hell was easy. Quite the opposite, actually. All in all, this is a solid break game. Like, if you want something to play in your lunch break for 20 minutes to forget about your real hell job, you will not go wrong here. Okay, we're getting close. At the end, the game actually gives you a break. You get to free fall the last 40 meters. And that's okay, because, you know, the pull of gravity gets weaker as you get to the center of the Earth. Okay, we're at the door and we have the coins. You psyched? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to hell! Yeah, we made it! Hell parties are the best parties because they're for eternity! Alright, awards time! Hell yeah! That's the episode! Stay tuned for the next widescreen episode for the biggest head in a police station I've ever seen! Until next time!